Hi everyone, I, I'm Valentina. Uh, I'm an international strategy consultant. I'm based in London. Hello and welcome to Obehi Podcast. I'm your host, Obehi A14. And I strongly believe that everyone has a story to share. Now let's get started with this episode. I work mainly with uh, family businesses and, and SMEs, um, usually across different countries uh, and across different sectors as well. Um, I focus a lot on intercultural and intergenerational leadership, um, and that means uh, on the on the client side and w- when we talk about companies, uh, it means like um, internationalization processes, multi generational planning, um, a lot of next generation generation engagement initiatives um, and then I also work as a, a business advisor and and coach for individuals um, when it comes to starting their own business or building an international career or preparing for, for a big change as, as as we do these days our careers are not linear anymore so a lot of change um, happens uh, throughout our our career and professional uh, life um, My passion for family businesses and SMEs, small, medium enterprises, comes from uh, my background. Uh, I'm a third generation family business member myself. Um, So I I, I really, um, one of my main aims as a professional is actually to uh, encourage that cross-generational work and that next generation uh, engagement, that probably comes from my uh, roots um, in in the sector of of family businesses. Thank you so much for that, uh, Valentina. Uh, Now, mm, here we we do a lot about uh, storytelling, uh, storytelling even within the area of business. Do you want to tell me a little bit about um, uh, where you were born, where you grew up, or where do you begin to form your identity as an individual? Tell me a bit about your, your, your background. Sure. Um, I originally come from a small town, uh, not from from Venice in in, in Italy. Um, and I I studied and grew up um, uh, there. Uh, that's where my family still is, and and our family business still is. So I'm very much part um, of that world. But um, just after university, I moved to London and I have been in London for quite a long time now. And and, and so I, I really, um, so I had my strong identity as part of my family and as part of uh, my At- Italian roots. But I also was very deliberate in wanting to find uh, my own identity outside um Italy and outside the family business as well. And that's what brought me um, to London and, and also to live uh, in other countries, in, in France, Spain and, and Germany at different points in, in, my, in my career. Um, so I would say my, my identity is really a combination of, uh, of my roots uh, as well as um, all the, 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 the travels and, and the work and, 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 and the life I had in other countries, which I think think really enriched uh, and made me not feeling like a citizen of one country really but a citizen of, of many of all really um, the ones that I've been living in. Because you are in London what do you want to tell us about London? So how is London today? Um, say this is early in the morning tell us about London give us some news. Um, well, obviously, London is is waking up the day after what I, I think is a historical moment, um, because as probably everyone um, knows, um, we had the Queen uh, funeral, the Queen's funeral yesterday. Um, and, and, and obviously, regardless of, you know, where we are from and what we believe in uh, and what what our stories are, we, we can see that as, as the end of an era. And, and, and so London has been a very different city over the last couple of weeks really we had a change in government we had a change um, at, the, at, at the helm of the royal family um, and and the city has been almost we believe that everyone has a story to share we believe in the power of storytelling in today's digital economy yes we believe that our audience need to be touched at the level of emotion so we can better engage what about you Do you believe in storytelling as much as we do? Do you want to reach the hearts and minds of your audience? Then join us in our online training class, Storytelling for Content Creators and Digital Entrepreneurs. Come, 
Come to obehiawanfood.com slash storytelling and learn how to leverage your storytelling skills so you can earn more as a content creator and digital entrepreneur. Storytelling is a powerful instrument at our disposal. Let's explore it together. See you in the class. In, on a standstill um, because of these changes. And, and so today it's like the start of, 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 a, uh, of, of a new era, really, I, w- I would say, without hopefully exaggerating. <laughs> I was, I was seeing a picture, uh, a guy was, uh, one person was posting one time saying, a great woman is leaving, another great woman is coming in. Of course, I'm talking of uh, the UK Prime Minister, uh, then of course, the death of, of the Queen. Uh, so yeah, it sort of make uh, uh, a, a good uh, a good comparison, what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, that, that's true, and, that's true. And I think that's a good point because it's also very um, interesting how, you know, by coincidence, you have a full change on, on both on both sides, because um, you have a new prime minister and then the, the, the Queen's uh, passing away happened. So it was all happening, you know, within two days, one from the other. So it really, I think, made people reflect on, on that as well. Mm-hmm. So how are the Londoners, uh, okay, the, the English feeling about the, the changes, also maybe within the area of the ecosystem of business? So how are people feeling about these changes? Obviously, it, it, it had already been a period of, of change because of Brexit as well. And, and obviously, you know, we are still living through that transition as well. And different people will have different perspectives. But, but clearly, um, it's, it's a country that has fundamental issues that need, need to be addressed. And I think change was, was, was needed. And, and, and we always hope that change will bring uh, an opportunity to do better and improve and, and support also those categories who are really suffering as a result of, 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 of the latest uh, events as well. Um, so I think there is a lot of hope that um, this will be one of the turning points um, to, to, to make things um, better and, and, and improve the situation uh, which is which is quite critical at the moment mm-hmm. all right and i'm talking of another thing that you just uh, touched there which is the brexit uh, the brexit uh, are you as uh, um okay of course the whole the whole block is, is europe no mm-hmm. you're coming from italy the european the again no and uh, the looking at uh, britain that is that have gone out of uh, of the of the block uh, how did you feel personally looking at it also from the point of view of business now? Because now you need to move in and out. Before it was very easy, you know, like uh, for example, uh, moving from Italy to uh, to Germany or to France or, or to other part of the common market is far easier to do businesses these days. Uh, but looking at a kind of this block that is there now, because uh, Britain is not inside the block, so you are going to have to face some bureaucracy. How do you feel about this as a, as a European and as a, a person who is living in, in Britain, but you are originally from Italy? Um, that's a very interesting uh, question and, and difficult to, to reply in a way, um, because I think I need to separate out how I feel as a, a, a European, as you, as, you, as, you, as you put it, um, and uh, as a professional. And I think there are two sides to, to it. Um, I think... Uh, the, the UK and, and, and specifically London, I, I lived most of my time, I mean, the, the, the vast majority of my time in England, uh, in, in London. Um, and London is a, a welcoming um, city full of opportunities for, for anyone. Um, obviously, there are, there are issues like in, in, in any other city, but it has always been uh, a city of opportunities from a professional and a personal point of view. Um, and I think personally, I never associated um, London with London and the UK, by extension, as a, a with the closure that happened with Brexit, because as obviously things have changed, and as you said, it's it's much more difficult for people to decide and come and work and live in the UK than it was before. Um, unfortunately, I have been there long enough to have a settled status, so for me, little has changed from a personal point of view. It has, in the sense of how I discovered a side to the country that wasn't on the surface before, because I always felt welcomed and I always found a lot of opportunities and the people around me uh, the same. I, we were probably a fortunate, um, fortunate in that sense. Um, from a business point of view, um, I think that 
it presents a lot of challenges, as we've seen from a from a point of view of supply chains and 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 costs of of leaving and costs of uh, anything from a delivery to uh, to you know doing business with 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 an international partner. Um, I also think that there are opportunities, and there are opportunities that the UK um, should use and should use well um, to improve the situation within the UK. Because the situation is, we have London, which is obviously the hub from from many perspectives, from the financial one, from from the wealth one, um, but uh, but it's very fragmented how the situation is in other parts of the country. So uh, if there is one thing that I would wish out of Brexit is that... um, if there are opportunities for the country to grow in other in other parts that are not, for example, London, and and in parts where that growth is needed, um, that that's the one I would wish for. Now uh, I'm going to ask you the last question here, of course, before we move on to our conversation today, uh, because during your explanation just now, when you were looking at uh, what is happening in the UK, looking at uh, the death of the Queen, the barrier that was do- that was done yesterday. Uh, you did uh, make mention of the word, I don't know, maybe loosely or intentionally, uh, of uh, um, of a, a new era, uh, something like that. No, mm-hmm. If you were to look at that new era and uh, look at um, all that, uh, that has happened, even with breast exit and the rest of it, do you see it making any serious change way that we proceed going forward? Also, maybe the era of doing business and working among ourselves? Um, I think... Obviously, there is always something that we can learn and we should learn from things happening. Um, I think um, the new era represents um, obviously a new beginning and a chance, as I said before, to improve yourself and to do better. And I think, for example, um, from from the Queen, and I think that was an accepted um, um, idea that I heard around quite a bit, is the sense of duty. Um, and, and and from other aspects, uh, for example, Brexit, the sense of collaboration. These are ideas that I think we, we should take with us and, and use for the future. Um, because, because we have critical and very complex problems to solve uh, the UK as well as other countries, as, as you know, Italy has, and, and, and any other country. We have all sorts of complexity and 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 uncertainty surrounding us. Uh, and I think what we need is actually that collaboration and that sense of duty and that idea that we can solve the problem, but we need to find new solutions. And all together, we need to make a contribution to find those solutions. Thank you so much for that, Valentina. All right, now let's go back to business. This is important. This is why we are here today. We're going to be talking about um, uh, uh, leadership and entrepreneurial mindset within the area of business. Now, uh, you, how did you go started in business as a career? Help me understand that. So, um, well, very much that, that comes very much from my family business background. I, I grew up talking about it at the dinner table. Uh, and, and that is one of the perks and one of the disadvantages at the same time of, of having a family business because it's always part of, of the conversation. Um, and I think I never really doubted that I wanted to uh, to ultimately have my own business. Um, what has changed changed over time was what I wanted my legacy to be and what I wanted my focus to be in, in doing business. Um, so I, I decided to, to, to have my own identity away from the family business as well. And the idea was to help other organizations and other businesses who are trying to develop their business or start their business um, and, and, and support and leverage some of my experience uh, to do so. And I think, again, it's very important because we are finding a completely different work environment at the moment and we need to keep moving and keep evolving and and if if i can support organizations to do that that's my ultimate uh, goal that's lovely that's really lovely all right uh, a while ago i was saying that we are uh, concentrating on uh, leadership and um, entrepreneurial mindset okay now let's look at it from the point of view of uh, an individual who do not understand what these terms might mean so in that sense how would you describe an et- entrepreneurial mindset um well, that's a very good question, Abai. It's a really difficult one to, to actually pinpoint uh, in a sense. Um, I think um, today more than ever, uh, entrep- an entrepreneurial mindset is key 
for entrepreneurs and, and for any individuals in a sense. And it's, it's the idea of, um, of having that proactiveness and, and, and that um, support of others and, and support of an idea that I think we should have as entrepreneurs and as, as, as professionals generally. Um, so for me, it's very much about the ethics and, and the way you go about making decisions and solving problems and, and finding a way to create your business while supporting others. And for me, you can't be a leader if you are not supporting other people as well, starting with yourself, but then definitely moving on to, to uh, empowering other people as well. Mm -hmm. All right. That, that empowerment is very important. Um, I, I'm sort of curious now. Uh, when did you realize that... Uh, it was important to sort of um, pay attention to mindset in business. I I think um, I had a, I, I was fortunate to work across different sectors and and across different countries and and I saw that um, I started to see that because of the, the the way we are working today and and how dynamically we need to move and how problems are getting more and more complex and and more interlinked. Uh, so different sectors and, and different issues are deeply in, interwoven together. Um, so we need new solutions and we need new knowledge. And, and what we know becomes obsolete very, very quickly compared to maybe the past where you, for example, with a normal um, learning, you could probably go through one career because we had one linear career. Um, but when you are facing what we are facing today and continuous changes in, what, in our life, in our profession, around us, you need to have a toolkit uh, of skills and of, of knowledge and experience that you can transfer and apply to any situation. Um, because, you know, by, we, we speak very often about what, which skills do you need for the future, to future-proof your career, for, for example. And the point is, we might not know at this point because things are changing so fast that what is needed today might not be needed in, in five years. Um, so what you need to have is the right mindset to face the, that change, regardless of what it is. So if you are flexible, um, if you if you are reflective, if you are capturing, um, I mean, listening and looking around and capturing all, all factors around you, then you can adapt to almost anything. And I think that's why your mindset comes in. All right. Uh, now, how do you how do you develop this mindset uh, for business? I think that is important for people to understand. Um, well, I, I definitely think it's a, it's a long term um, project rather than an overnight uh, effort, um, and and it goes with uh, really building putting building blocks there in terms of continuously developing and learning and building on what you've been you've been doing um, for me it's uh, it's about making a deliberate and intentional decision uh, of of what you 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 would like to achieve and then it doesn't really matter if you if the ultimate output is what you wanted to start with but that gives you a direction and that gives you a purpose and gives you um, a sort of a, a, a line to follow, um, and then and then it's being open um, to to see what happens around you and adapt yourself and your business to what happens around uh, around you. All right, now let's talk a, a little bit about the second part of the conversation, which is leadership. Um, how do you think people should develop their leadership in business? What are the key? Um, what are the strategy to be able to build it? So um, I, I, I'm a big believer in, in, in two sides to, to leadership. I think it starts with self-leadership and then it moves into what we more widely call um, leadership as, as, a, as in managing other, other people, for example, or managing um, a, a business. So in terms of starting from yourself, I think it's about knowing who you are as a professional and it's knowing understanding what your strengths and what your weaknesses and, and things 
to improve R. Um, and once you realize that, you also you also have your own goals and you have your own objectives um, of what you want to achieve. Um, but it's only by understanding that and understanding how, for example, you respond to situation, how you make decisions, that, that you build a, a leadership. Because you can recognize what your style is and how you respond to a certain conversation or to a certain situation. And I think once you, you, you build that, um, you, you then have the confidence and you, you then have the ability to support other people and empower, and, and it's what we were saying before, and empower our other people to do the same. Um, and that translates into wanting to encourage collaboration, for example, and encourage the development of someone else's potential. Sure. Um, and, and that applies obviously to people, but then to the processes of your business as well. Because again, businesses are like individuals and they are growing fast, they are evolving fast, and, and they do need a lot of skills and a lot of um, experiences that each, each individual should contribute to. So as a leader, you are the guiding force behind that. But then it's everyone's contribution that makes a business grow. Grazie. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Um, now, uh, let's look at you uh, personally. How did you develop your own leadership ability in your business? Um, so I, it's a mix of things. I think um, I was fortunate to have very interesting roles uh, across my career and I took I took a lot of uh, experiences and, and and knowledge away from from those roles and when I when I say roles I think also the people that surrounded me so uh, I, I a lot of my leadership skills come from my role models and my mentors uh, by looking at other people and learning from them that was a great uh, a great way to then understand what, who, who I was and, and, and how I wanted to, to lead and, and, and to be an entrepreneur. Now, you had some people that you learned from. Uh, that is actually how the, the word function, that we are not born with all the, all the quality that we actually need to, to navigate this journey of life. Uh, for this reason, we need to learn from those who have been there before us. I think that is why the, the, the famous idea that we are able to see ahead of us because we are standing on the shoulder of giants. Mm -hmm. uh, it's always true. So who have you been learning from? What did you learn from them? Um, I, I, I was fortunate to have a, a, a very wide range of people I, around me um, that I could learn from. So I started, I believe in mentors not necessarily being formally formally stated as mentors I think as you said I, I completely agree uh, you learn from anyone around you who has a different perspective and a different opinion and a different background from yours um, it's already enriching and it's already part of that of that process of learning in terms of the ones who have been like very key to to my uh, development as, as a professional, uh, it starts in the family, starts with my dad and, and my grandfather before that. Um, and, and, and it's why I, I feel so strongly about the intergenerational um, work I do as well. Um, as you said, it's so important to learn from the people who came before us. And, and, and that was my, my very first uh, learning point, uh, seeing how, how they created something and, and, and how they went about it. Um, and then, and then moving on, um, I had mentors and role models both within my workplaces and also outside. Um, even, even someone that I, I would have met, at, for example, a business event and then, and then stayed in touch and, and uh, admired for one particular aspect or more of, of their career and just engaged with them and, and, and kept them as, as my mentors and advisors uh, in the next steps of my career. So it's really a wide range of, of different people. And each one of them had a specific... Um, trait or, or a specific knowledge that I really wanted to learn more about. And, and that's why I saw as, as, my, as my role models and mentors. Uh, and before you were also uh, making reference of the family business, I'm sure there are some individuals there who do not understand what that means. So I want you to give me a short background of what is even meant by family business. Then, of course, I'm going to be asking you uh, something, something about what you do within your family business. 
Um, so, so basically, the, the family businesses come in different shapes and forms, but uh, usually uh, they are fully, uh, let's say, fully owned by by one or multiple generations of the same family, um, and 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 that makes things easier sometimes, and sometimes uh, it complicates things because what what I see is the the dynamics and the conversations you you have can be very different from from what you have with with other with a, a traditional counterpart. To be a great content creator in today's fast changing economy, you need one thing: storytelling. Storytelling is a powerful instrument to leverage, either for personal use or for your business success. This is why this training class, Storytelling for Content Creator and Digital Entrepreneurs, was created. It is designed to help you leverage the power of storytelling so you can stand out from the crowd and earn more in your business. Come to obehiair14.com slash storytelling and learn how to leverage your storytelling skill to earn more as a content creator and digital entrepreneur. You need the power of storytelling to stand out in the competition. So let's explore it together. See you in the class. Because there is a very big emotional element to the way things get done in, in family businesses. Um, because again, you, you have some family dynamics that, that are interlinked with, with the business dynamics. So when you, for example, make decisions, um, it's at times quite, quite difficult, uh, unless it is formalized, to distinguish between decision makers and, and responsibility and, and who the different roles are. Um, what the different roles are and, and and obviously it's one of those places where you can really see dynamics of leadership and and succession and intergenerational collaboration coming to to life because they are the core of, of how the business happens and 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 goes on but obviously in there you also have an element of people they are not members of of, of the business of the family uh, but are part of the business um, and and that is what makes um, the situations very complex and makes my my work interesting and, and challenging at the same time for example mm -hmm. interesting and challenging and that is powerful but if it is both interesting and challenging meaning there are a lot of good elements there to keep driving mm -hmm. on <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> <laughs> all right so what is actually your family business? I mean, what are you doing in your business? What are you, what are you, what are you um, rendering as a service to the people? So my family business uh, works in the furniture sector um, and, and we produce uh, wooden drawers for furniture manufacturers. So it's a very niche business. It's part of an industrial district. So we are very specialized. Um, and more specifically myself, um, I support with marketing and communication and a lot of the relationships with international clients and, and suppliers. Um, and we are actually, um, it's, it's quite interesting we are speaking today. We are celebrating our 50th year since foundation um, this week. So uh, it's a very important m moment for it as well. Thank you so much for that. So you've been, you've been in the system for 50 years as a business, right? Yes, yes, we have. That, that's interesting. So we are all invited to that celebration. You are. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. It's That's definitely great. something to celebrate, right? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Many businesses that start they, they close up almost immediately. So you'll be there for fifty years. That is a lot to celebrate there. And you know, and you know what uh, the a lot of the sayings uh, in different countries are that you you build a business uh, in the first generation, you then grow it in the second, and then the third you don't know what really happens. It might get destroyed. Uh, so, um, you know, but joke aside, I, I think it's really important that we, we support the, all businesses to make it as far as, far as possible because uh, they are the backbone, especially small businesses and medium businesses are the backbone of, of our countries. Yeah, yeah that, that's true. That's true. That's true. Now, how do you build a stronger bond on a family business? Looking at yours, for example. Um, I think it's communication and it's being very open and 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 talking about 
things. Um, what I've seen, for example, um, inside and outside my business, my, especially when, when I work with clients and so I have a more objective uh, point of view as well, um, it's important that things are said and it doesn't matter if you are uh, if your boss is your your dad or or your uncle or your or your mother uh, it's important that things are discussed and decisions are made in a more structured way um, and there is that separation uh, between what is family and 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 what is uh, what is business um and you almost build that identity within the business that is a different well it's, it's the same identity because it's the same people but you know when you are in a boardroom and you know when you are at the dinner table mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> is that is that always very easy to differentiate because you are talking of family Obviously, it's not, and that's and that's and that's the the emotional element that comes into the boardroom, for example, when you make decisions or 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 when you take action. Uh, and I think that that is one of the key challenges, and and of, often is one of the uh, turning points in determining the success uh, or or the issues that a business might might have, um, because it's it's really difficult to see things clearly when you are part of it and you are part of that family and part of that business all right now uh, what is it because uh, in the family business uh, of course it's a family you know because you start with a family before you become a business and that make it even very uh, intriguing now um so i'm trying to understand because everybody probably is not going to be in business no but maybe that's part of the family therefore they are related to the business mm-hmm. so in that sense what is the role of entrepreneurial mindset in a family business? Um, I, I think you, so there are two, two aspects to it. I think there is, for sure, you have a, uh, you probably grew up with a, with a very strong entrepreneurial mindset because um, you do develop it because you are part of it. And, and especially if, if there are strong bonds and what we were talking about, an engagement, uh, then you do, you do grow up with it and you do understand the dynamics and, and, and you are part of it um, uh, from the start. But obviously that engagement and that bonds are not always there. And as you said, it's very challenging. So at that, at that point, because we have different identities and you might not share common goals and, and common ideas, the entrepreneurial mindset becomes almost a challenge within a business because everyone has a different idea of what being an entrepreneur and what progressing your business means. Um, and so that's when different, for example, parts of, of, of the business and of the family take different directions in how they want to develop the business. And that's, again, that can generate issues. So I think entrepreneurial mindset and, and keeping developing and keeping that openness that we talked before about before, it's key if you want to keep that harmony and that uh, cohesive being, uh, being cohesive, cohesive um, you know, between different points of view and, and, and perspectives. Yeah, I think family business is something that <laughs> will require a lot of study to be able to understand because there are a lot of dynamics, there are, there are a lot of moving parts in it. All right, now, uh, let's look at leadership, for example. How do you differentiate between leadership and family hi- hierarchy in a family business, does it conflict? How do you how do you uh, how do you deal with that? Um, it's a, it's a it's a critical point um, because because first of all, as you said, there is such a variety of of, of different dynamics and and a lot of research and and studies are needed to really uh, it's it's difficult to generalize really. Um, w- what the point is, leadership is obviously where the succession a lot of the succession issues are as well. Uh, and, so, and so it's really important for a family business to create that pipeline and to cultivate that environment where people can grow, uh, different family members, but also non-family members can grow within the business. And and, and leadership is is m- should move away from the hierarchical um uh, let's say structure that we we we, we know of because because obviously uh, we we need more dynamic and more agile and more collaborative entities and i think family businesses could be very powerful in doing that if they manage to to uh, let's say um, control the more emotional and the more competitive aspects of of many family members for example um 
being part of the of the uh, board uh, of the board or or wanting to to lead the company. Um, so I think leadership is where you know a pipeline and a lot of planning needs to to go into uh, to make sure that you you engage and and you engage enough uh, enough people and, and engage them enough in terms of, of wanting to be part of the family business and prepare them know what their role could be and and understand what each member can bring to the business because one i personally think one of the key strengths of a family business is that you have a lot of different people that are part of that group that hopefully you trust and you you have a good bond with and they all have different perspectives and different skills and if everyone comes together that's when you have a very powerful mix of skills um and and that could could be you know the the the, the most important element for a business to to thrive uh, so if used positively the family business element is key in in leadership and and a lot of other companies could learn from it um, but obviously some of the behind the scenes dynamics can can spoil that because there are um, there is competition in terms of getting to leadership and, and things like that thank you for that I appreciate that uh, all right now uh, because you have been working in a family business for a long time and your family business have been existing for at least 50 years, uh, I think it is important now to, uh, to, to tap into your experience. That is very important. Now, how is it easy to run a family business compared to maybe other businesses out there? Um, so I, I think there are a series of challenges that are very similar to, to the other companies. And obviously, we are going through these very transitional times where uh, issues with, for example, raw materials and supply chains and, and talent acquisition are, are very, are very um, key uh, and, and, and are sort of changing the way we, we make decisions and, 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 and develop our businesses. Um, when it comes to very specific challenges I, I think that engagement of all members is uh, is one of the key elements if, if managing your own business um, and communicating um, with everyone with with the family but also with with non-family members and it's it's really important to also have those non-family members uh, become important parts of your business because you can't run a business even though you you know you are a family without all the other people who contribute to it. And I think you do need that external perspective as well. For me, it's, um, it's, I always included an external objective uh, perspective uh, in, in the decision making, because that is really the way to balance um, some of the opinions and some of the, of the uh, ways of seeing things that could be critical in the success of, of, of the business. All right. Now, you're originally from Italy, but now you are living in the UK. Uh, now, let's look uh, uh, at that uh, for a moment. Um, looking at Italy and in UK where you are, how big is the market of family business? I mean, how much percentage or how significant is this type of businesses in the market? Of course, looking at uh, the UK and the Italian market. So in... Uh you could argue that it, it is probably uh, more present in, in, in Italy, but it is a, the backbone of both countries, uh, both in the shape of being family businesses, but also on the sm small and medium side. Uh, as we were saying before, the, you know, the vast majority of the businesses, even though they might not make the headlines, are actually family run and of medium uh, dimensions. So it, I think it's really one of those sectors that, we sometimes don't define as such. We, we probably when we we also talk about a company, we don't say necessarily it's a family business, or we might not really label it as such. Um, but I think it's it's a very present entity. But in other in other countries like Germany, for example, as well, and 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 a lot of the European and non-European countries, and there is a very strong tradition of family businesses. I remember I did um, interview a guy uh, from from Germany, mm -hmm. and he was also telling me that in Germ in Germany there is a, a high percentage of businesses that are owned by family, and I think it's it's quite fair to say that all across Europe there is a high percentage of businesses that are actually run um, by this uh, term family businesses. So it's quite high here in Europe. Yeah, yeah, that, that's true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is. 
All right. Um, now you are in the, in the furniture business, uh, correct? Yes. Okay. So how is it easy to market a furniture business in Italy and in Europe? Let, let's just put it also in Europe. So we uh, we are business to business um, because we produce uh, we we produce drawers for the furniture manufacturers. So we don't go out to the to the end customer. Um, but what we do uh, is obviously we build relationships with with our clients, and we we have a lot of long term relationships. Um, they are at the core of of our production and of our business um and then and then it's important to uh expand it and build on that by being for example present at uh fairs and 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 initiatives that are done in in different uh countries but obviously um it's a it's a very it's a very critical time because of the situation we are in and our strategies are always evolving to respond to that because obviously we have the issues I was mentioning before in terms of uh, for example raw materials and and the costs of, of production that that clearly are affecting um, work for, for for many all sectors I, I would I would say across all countries um, so so the way we approach it has been changing a lot but I think what we leverage is existing relationships that we have built decades ago uh, and allow us to 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 have sort of a knowledge of a certain market and certain connections within that market that allow us to then to then uh, um, present our products and and uh, interact with people in that in that market thank you so much Valentina all right. Now, uh, how can people connect with you, those who want to do business with you or maybe who want to know more about your business and what you offer? So the best way to, to connect with me is, is via LinkedIn. Um, I'm always happy to, even after today's conversations, to hear from people and what they think and, 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 and their perspectives on, on what we've been discussing today. So my LinkedIn profile is definitely the, the best way to get in touch with me. All right. Now, what is your final thought here, considering what we have discussed today well, within the area of leadership and entrepreneurial mindset? Um, well, I think the final thought is for everyone to really invest in themselves and uh, reflect on what their objectives are, uh, build on those uh, and, and take action uh, and, and make their contribution to build something that can support them, their families, as well as empower uh, other people as well. Thank you so much, Valentina. Is there another thing you would like to add to the conversation? I think I've asked you about everything that I wanted to ask you. Uh, no, I just wanted to say thank you very much for having me as your guest today. It was, it was really a pleasure, Bye. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I really do. Thank you. If you enjoyed this podcast, make sure you subscribe so you never miss any of our future episodes. Rate and review Obehead podcast and share with your friends who might need it. I remain Obehead everyone for Thank you so much for listening. I'll talk to you in the next episode.